Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is session 15, part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing this session on the feelings, emotions, and responses God has generally has towards sin itself, and has when his children choose to sincerely forgive and repent. The session was recorded on the 5th of June 2018 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia. How God feels about human addictions. So how does God feel about her children engaging in personal addictions? We've spoken about sin generally, Mm. if we could be more specific and discuss this issue of addictions and perhaps we'll just give a brief summary of addiction, Mm -hmm. which is um, any um, action or behaviour or habit or um, anything I do internally or externally to avoid my own emotional experience Mm -hmm. uh, for any period of time. And it's not Uh, I need to repetitively engage with it and it never actually reduces the emotional, you know, removes emotion from me. It's just a pure distraction and avoidance. And often we're very compulsive in these things. Mm. We feel like they're out of our control um, because we feel so, they're driven by the desire to avoid emotional experience. Yeah, so so we must say here we're talking not about just physical addictions such as, you know, that are dangerous or, no. uh, uh, or habitual, yeah. but, but also about the emotional addictions, which are even worse in most cases. Mm-hmm. And, and, more, and often more um, insidious. Overlooked. Yeah, yeah, they're insidious and overlooked. Mm-hmm. So, so what does God feel about all these things? Well, yes. it's very interesting what God feels about them because, because God feels in some ways that they're worse than the sin itself. Mm, so can you explain that and draw the distinction between sin and addiction? Well, the sin is the result of the addiction. Where the addiction causes us to break God's laws. Mm-hmm. The addiction is the cause, the motivating thing that yep. causes us to decide to do something out of harmony with love, mm-hmm. whether it's out of harmony with love of self or out of harmony with love of another. So, mm-hmm. so the addiction is actually the cause. Yes. The result is the sin, mm-hmm. right? The, de- the desire to sin is the addiction. Yep. Right? The de- yep. addiction is the desire to sin. So I desire to avoid my pain. So there's a desire to sin, right? There. Desire to sin. I'm, my addiction is anger. Or yes. my addiction is uh, chocolate. Or passive or, aggression or, or, or control. drug abuse or alcohol or, abuse or... Or TV. Or TV <laughs> or, or just, you know, uh, every making everyone around you feel your pain or... Involving others, yeah, or lots commiseration, of all those things. So that's my addiction. That's your sin. You, you, no, your sin, the actions the desi- you just... The actions you took are your sin. Okay, so what's the, the addiction? The addiction is the frenzy emotion driving the sin the desire the to desire avoid to yeah it's the the addiction is the desire the sin is what the desire brings about uh-huh right so, is it so the action you mean i take yeah, yeah. yeah. well no, it can, might not just be an action it might be a thought it might be a word it might be an action it might be intention or some future intention even or whatever mm-hmm. but it's all driven from a desire at some point yes the desire is the addiction yes right? so so what does god feel about the addiction well, the addiction is worse than the action because the addiction causes the action. Mm. It's the primary root cause of what you do. So really so, then, by that definition I gave at the beginning, mm-hmm. there's a really only one addiction, that all those things that I engage in aren't the addictions. The addiction is I don't want to feel A or B or I don't want to feel Well, emotion. it's not necessarily just that, that. You might have an addiction for power or addiction for some other thing that is not driven by an avoidance of an emotion. It's just that you want to experience a different emotion. Mm, Do you so, understand? So you so need you to be, refine my definition at the beginning yeah, then. That's yeah. right. You, you, you can't just say that um, your desire to do something to sin is driven by some error because mm-hmm. it not all, is not always driven by error. It's often driven by this, uh, what, what's called a desire, a, a, a loving desire becoming fertile. In other yes. words, an unloving desire being fed and watered and becoming mm-hmm. fertile and then 
you choose the unloving action. So I, I experience something once where I feel in power and control over another person and I love the rush and you loved of it. it. I love it. I feel like, wow, right. that's yeah. that's amazing. It's like a drug to me. Yeah. I don't. I'm not even avoiding anything. I'm just seeking that kind of pleasure. You love that feeling. Sort of. Yeah. That you you rush. see it as a pleasure, and yep. you want it as an instant result. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't care about the consequences of it. That desire mm -hmm. drove you to the sin mm -hmm. of taking power or you know, mm -hmm. over other people. Mm -hmm. So the sin is the taking power over other people. Mm -hmm. The desire is the motivator for taking power over people. So, Which is the addiction. So the addiction is the desire. Mm -hmm. and, and the addiction doesn't have to be caused by prior harm or the avoidance of prior harm even. It can be just caused by something you want. It's good, it just be something that you've decided to want. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we've got to be very careful here because the addiction itself is the driving force for all sin. And the addiction is really the condition within the soul, not the action. Yes, the, uh, the addiction is the, the desire that is fertile in the soul, mm -hmm. creating the action, mm -hmm. creating the response, creating the, the, the behaviour that you generate as a result. Yes, right? so the sin, uh, by the definition we gave a couple of sections yeah. ago. Yep. The sin is behaviour, Yep. is what we do the human behavior the addiction yeah. is the desire that drives what we do mm -hmm. now now what do you think god's going to think about that of course god's going to think that the reason why what you do what you do is it's, worse than what you do it's more significant it's more significant yep. because it generates what you do yes so so this is where i notice we talk about addiction with people and everyone almost laughs about it and i'm going yeah. man this is serious yes that you <laughs> laugh about it because yeah. Because the reality is, it is the driving desire for your sin. So from God's perspective, you, th you think God dislikes sin? What do you think God feels about addiction? Yeah. Right, yeah. Deep yeah. hatred for addiction. Yes. <laughs> Are we saying hatred there? Yeah, well, or? you know, it's not, a, it's not a violent emotion from God's perspective. Right. It, it's a, but it's a deep, you know, dislike or hatred for the sin, for, for the addiction itself. That The fact that you want it, you want to keep it in you, you want to maintain it, you want it... You know, he, he's mm -hmm. not that impressed with it, with mm -hmm. it, right? He doesn't judge it mm -hmm. in the sense of like, you're a bad person, unworthy, and all these other mm. things now because of it. So, so stop putting any human context on hatred. That's, that's right. I just want to be careful because yeah. a lot of people assume that the opposite of love is hate. That's right. And that yeah. then how can this loving being be full of hate? No, it's not, um, it's not like so, that at all. So he, just he, clear, he, yeah. he doesn't have a violent response to your addiction yeah right and if he did you'd be dead by now yeah because right? let's face it most of us have have had a whole list of addictions so, mm. and if god really engaged his dislike in a in a violent manner mm -hmm. you'd already be dead so mm -hmm. so give up the idea that god's violent about the whole thing mm -hmm. but there is if you can feel god's feelings about addictions when god transmits those feelings to you through the conscience you will feel yes he is very firm about his dislike of this addiction yes. and and the reason why is he knows that it is the desire mm -hmm. that drives it is the cause of the sin mm. the sin is caused by this underlying desire mm. that you have fertilized and mm -hmm. kept within you mm -hmm. by choice mm -hmm. so while other people might have handed it to you or you might develop it to, to for yourself mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's now in you and you like it. Mm -hmm. And this is our problem. Mm. We, we've got to get rid of the fact that we like it. We've yep. got to face the fact we like it, yep. work our way through it. Now, as soon as we make that change in decision to do that, God loves that decision we're making now because mm. he knows that without addressing the addiction, the desire, the sin will never disappear. Yes. And unless we fix the cause of our sin, mm -hmm. the sin itself will remain. Yeah. And we'll keep creating new ones yeah. of the same type. He knows that. So, so it, it's a very well, so while God feels some compassion for our emotional injuries that drive our need to have our addictions for fulfilled, mm -hmm. God also knows that our addictions are the primary driving force for our sin, mm. and 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 He wants us to get rid of our addictions. And and I cannot stress how much God wants us to get rid of our addictions. Mm. Because he knows that if you get rid of the addictions, the desire to sin disappears. Aren't you saying that the addictions are the desire to sin? That's right. Yes. You get rid of the addiction, the desire for sin disappears. Mm. 
the the sin the addiction is the desire so you get rid of the addiction you've got rid of the desire to sin yes and so the sin naturally will never be created yeah and and god knows this of course yeah. and so this is why god wants us uh, to see that our addictions are the main driving factor for our evil actions mm -hmm. And unless we remove addictions, we are not sincere about getting rid of sin. Mm. Right? So, so this is very important for us to understand. Yes. So to God, the cause of our evil actions, which is our desire to satisfy our addictions, mm -hmm. right, has to be dealt with. And unless we consider the cost of our addictions to ourselves and others, we are not dealing with our sin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not. And and. It's, it's just as unloving and as, as evil as the evil actions we engage to, mm. to retain the underlying condition that drives those evil, evil actions. Yeah. So, so everyone sort of, when we talk to them about addictions, they have this real sort of innocent look on their face. Why well, you think that's bad? Mm. I didn't do anything about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But you have, of course. Yeah. But, you know, they think, oh, it's not so bad. You know, everybody has that or whatever. Yep. Uh, from God's perspective, it, it, it's the cause, the driving factor of our evil actions. So it has to be eradicated. <laughs> and yeah. God, God has got laws upon laws established <laughs> yeah. to eradicate your evil desires. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Do you want me to go through then those notes? I think you've covered it a I lot. I think so. Yeah, I think I've covered it. Like you can yeah. see that evil comes about from the desire to satisfy addiction without the consideration or of the real costs of the addiction. Mm -hmm. so, so you can see we're basically choosing to engage our selfishness and, um, and not uh, con consider the cost of our selfishness to others yeah. or to the environment or to the energy that goes into correcting the results of our selfishness yes for others in the environment or you know or god's uh, angelic messengers even or uh, you yeah. know we're not considering any of these costs at all yes so it's very very selfish for it. we just want our addiction and that's it one our addiction that's it and unless we start seeing addictions as evil yeah we are not going to fix them and unless we start seeing them as the cause of our sinful behavior, mm -hmm. we are not going to fix them. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, God's, God's feelings about it. this is very strong. You must see the cause of your sinful behavior. Of your sinful behavior. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right. So God, um, God has, a, like I said, there's a huge number of laws that measure the desire to sin. Yes. Mm. And, and, and in fact, act upon the desire to sin. Mm. Try to correct the desire to sin. So, yeah, the, like God, God, a lot of God's laws that pertain to the human soul ref, are about correcting the desire to sin because naturally God knows that it's the desire to sin that when acted upon causes a sin. Mm. 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 Okay. Now, our better course of action with our uh, addictions is to go, right, I can feel this desire to sin. I'm going to refuse to allow this desire to sin to be acted upon. So yep. that means I haven't sinned now. Yep. And I'm going to focus my attention on removing from me the reason why I feel like I want to. Yeah, so I... Is it appropriate to ask you a question here? About addictions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we're talking about God's uh, but no, feelings about, about, about No, it's about my experience of feeling that I'm entering a relationship with God through the acknowledgement of my desire to sin. Yes, it, it's impossible for a person, actually. It's an important point. Mm. It's impossible for a person to have a relationship with God while they do not recognize their desire to sin. Mm. Yes. And because the, because the desire to sin is the cause of sin. Yeah. And and unless you're willing to see the cause of sin, it's impossible to have a relationship with God. Right. So a person's relationship with God often begins mm. when they first see their desire to sin. Yeah, and and I think and I think I've referenced this at other points in this series. Mm -hmm. Um 
but there's a difference between doing that on your own see um or doing see, it with God, yeah. seeing your desire to sin and attempt and saying so this thing that you mentioned earlier about experiencing the desire to sin but saying oh, look i'm not going to do that yeah. experiencing the addictive desire and then saying i'm not going to do that and really attempting to do that in a self-reliant way in a way that's quite judgmental of self uh, as opposed to sort of surrendering to the emotional experience of that desire uh, without acting upon it and being open to God in that process isn't there. C certainly. Yeah. Like, certainly. You, you need... You, that's when you start to experience God's feelings about what you are doing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, you know, most people, when they even look at their sins, they're not willing to experience God's feelings about what they're doing. Yeah. Because God's feelings are quite hard to experience about what you're doing sometimes. Yes. They are. Yes. You know, God has very strong feelings about yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. That's harmful. And, and God will reflect the strength of that if you open, let yourself feel God's feelings about it. Yeah. And most people don't want to feel that. Yeah. So, so what they do is they don't want to do it with God because God's going to expose it really rapidly and also like it's going to be full on the exposure of the sin yeah. if you connect to God. So most people don't want to do that. And, and for that reason, most people never enter real forgiveness or repentance because, it, because, they, because they are still trying to prevent God's feelings about yeah. fe feeling God's feelings about it. Yeah. And until you know God's feelings about it, you don't really know what you've done. Yeah. You don't. You know, you're going to have a human conception of what you've done, which is often, you know, justified, minimized, you know, blamed on other people. That's what you're going to have instead. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, knowing what God feels and well, knowing God's emotions about addictions is a very powerful thing to change your addictions. Mm. It's highly unlikely you will change your addictions unless you know God's feelings about them. Mm. Mm. So that's just an aside about addictions specifically okay so it's a very powerful thing to actually go right i'm going to deal with these addictions by firstly acknowledging them with god and in the process of acknowledging them with god and le letting god tell you about them you can now learn oh this is all the impacts that they're having particularly when you dump your addictions on other people mm. see when you do it to yourself there's a, there's a whole set of things that happens there but when you do it to other people you yeah, know, there's a whole heap powerful. of things that God has to do to help those other people now too, mm. uh, to try to recover from what you, from your sin. Mm. When you just do it with yourself, well, you know, there's a, just you that needs to be helped to recover. But when you do it with other people, now there's a whole heap of people that have to be recovered, you know. Mm. Mm. But you can't really have an addiction just with yourself, can you? And you can, uh, it can be limited, the impact on others, but it's always going to impact others, isn't it's it? It's always going to impact others, but some addictions certainly impact others far less far than others. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you have the addiction, you know, if you have the addiction to be violent because you enjoy violence, you know, obviously that's going to have a huge impact on yeah. other people. Yeah. Um, it has some impact on yourself, of course, too, but, yeah. but it has a huge impact on other people. But if you just have an addiction to be quiet, <laughs> You know, yeah. other people are impacted to a degree in the sense that they have to try to draw you out if they yeah. want to know you. But most people will just give up doing that yeah. anyway. And uh, and you'll be alone. And, and so it only mostly affects yourself. Mm. So there are certain addictions that impact upon yourself primarily only. Mm -hmm. And then there are other addictions that impact upon the world around you in a, in a market and, and deliberate way. Mm. And obviously those ones are considered to be much worse from God's perspective than the ones that just impact upon yourself. Mm. 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 Okay. Mm. All right. So that's how God feels about her, when her children engage addictions. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We have to remember, though, that just because God has these very strong feelings about our addictions, it doesn't mean he judges them. You yeah. see, you've got to remember that judgment, which is a human condition, is the feeling of wanting to put someone's put someone's worth down mm -hmm. while you tell them the truth? Yes. So, so judgment is a is, or what you believe to be true. You know. Mm -hmm. So judgment is the feeling of wanting to pull down somebody's worth. Now, God never wants to do that with us. All He wants to do is expose to us the truth. The truth is yeah. that what you're doing is really wrong. Yes. Right. The truth is it's really damaging, really harmful, and it hurts people, and it hurts 
mm -hmm. my, the environment I created it, and, and it's, and it's going to create more pain and suffering for you. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. God's very firm about that being the truth. Mm -hmm. But he's not judgmental in the sense of saying, you bad person now, you're a terrible person, you should you know, never recover from that. You know, and, and he doesn't want to go into treating you violently mm -hmm. as a result of that. And, and so quite often the way God uh, feels about us when we, when we have these addictions is, is sometimes less violently than we feel about ourselves. Yes. And so, you know, obviously, you know, quite frequently, um, our violent feelings about ourselves having certain sins or having certain addictions uh, are actually worse than God's feelings about ourselves sometimes. Yes, and that was... Not always, though. <laughs> for, for a lot of people, they yeah. are happy to sin and they're happy to have their mm. desire to sin. So obviously God's feelings under those circumstances are going to be very much more difficult for them, those kind of people to feel yeah. than it is for a person to, who truly sees sincerely the extent of their sin and so forth. Yes, mm. yes. And I suppose that there is a <laughs> distinction between me hearing what you're saying about sin mm -hmm. and th God's feelings about sin um, and having my own experience of what I think sin is and how I think God feels about it, mm -hmm. because it could be in the very negative. So I've had the experience where I feel worse about myself when I'm doing it without God. I connect to God, I feel God's feelings about it, but I also feel that there's not this horrible judgment that I've been heaping on myself yeah. in that process. That's right. And so, it feels like almost relieving, um, whereas, as you're saying, other people might have a very distinct experience. And where an they almost are, complete opposite experience, where they feel they're being judged at every moment by God. Yes. Because, because prior to God's that, feelings are very were... much more strongly, you know, passionate. Yes than their own feelings about their own sin. Yes. So, so it depends about where they're coming from as yeah. to how they've experienced that. Yeah. We've got to remember God is not violent and God mm -hmm. does not want to pull down your worth, yeah. but God does want to state things as they are. Yeah. He expects us to face the truth. Yeah. And so when it comes to our addictions, he, he's very concerned that we face the truth of our addictions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. How God feels about human disease and sickness. So how does God feel about disease and illness and sickness on earth? Mm -hmm. Because very often humans have a lot of anger with God about the fact that disease and sickness exists and that people pass and, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to talk about that. Mm. Well, uh, we must again understand the cause of sickness and disease. The cause of sickness and disease is the attempt to suppress emotion. The attempt to suppress emotion is in an unloving action towards oneself, mm -hmm. and it will cause disease and sickness. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, God created it to cause such the things, mm -hmm. to show you that the suppression of emotion is a damaging and disease-creating process. Mm. You need to allow the flow of emotion. And so God's trying to tell us the truth about it. Suppression of emotion is going to cause you major damage mm. in your life, mm. major damage. God did not create the sickness or disease. He created the law that states if you suppress your emotion, you create sickness or disease. Yes. Yes, yeah, there's a big difference. <laughs> there's a big it? difference between yeah. those two things. You're the one creating the sickness and disease. So mm -hmm. if there's anyone to be angry with yourself, it's yourself, yeah. not, not God. Yeah. Of course, being angry with yourself about it is probably not going to improve the situation either. Yes. You, know, you yeah. need to understand why you're suppressing the emotion mm -hmm. that creates the disease or sickness. Mm -hmm. So, so God created the potential for the soul to experience disease and sickness mm -hmm. through its own creation of the avoidance of the feeling of emotion, yeah. the denial of emotion. Yeah. And so uh, when the human denies emotion, the human is in disharmony or disobedience of God's laws of love mm -hmm. about how the soul has been constructed and created. So the sickness itself is a demonstration to the human, I'm acting out of harmony with God's laws of love. Towards my soul. Yeah. I'm acting out of harmony towards my own soul with regard to the way I act in regards to my emotions. Mm. That's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Now, the flavor of the emotion determines the type of disease or sickness. And we, yeah. and we won't go into that because that's a long discussion in yes. itself. But it's important to understand that the law is only responding to my desire to shut down my soul. Mm. 
that's what it's responding to. Yes. It's telling you, no, you're creating a disease in your soul by doing this. Mm -hmm. You're creating a disease in your physical bodies, which is a result of creating the suppression, the suppression of the flow of emotion in your soul. Yeah. It's trying to inform you about that. Yeah. Now, bearing in mind that that's God's intention here mm -hmm. with regard to the law, creating a law that says when you shut down your emotions, you're going to create disease. Obviously, God's, God's desire is that you don't create disease. Yeah. But he's not going to take responsibility for it because it's a human creation. Yes. He, he can't say... He can't say he created it because he didn't. He only created the law that states that if you suppress your emotions, disease is an automatic result. Yeah. It is the sin that creates it. Yes. Right. The sin that creates the suffering and the disease itself. Yeah. So really, humans are then, if you think about it, the creator Creators. of the disease or the sickness. Yep. Through the attempt to obey, disobey God's laws governing the way the soul operates mm -hmm. and how the soul functions. So therefore, humans must be made responsible for the removal of the disease yep. or the sickness. And, and of course, God can assist that process as long as we engage the process of repentance or forgiveness yep. about why we desire to shut down our emotional yes. condition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so this, this is something we need to come to understand and, and, uh, and, and actually deal with in our lives, you know, seeing yep. the real cause of disease and sickness and how we can address it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Very good. So obviously God has compassion for the fact that we are running hard from our own emotional experience. Yes, although sometimes we do that for no other reason than that we want to, you mm -hmm. know, and obviously God's compassion for that is less than if we do it because we've been injured in some way. Yes. Right? Yes. So <laughs> the degree and of God's compassion would depend upon <laughs> <laughs> the, the degree of our desire to engage the process and, and the cause of the underlying reasons why we do yes. it. Yes. And this is something that we'll talk about at length in our next assistance group, won't we? Of God's attitude towards our sin. and Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We, we need to see that really, though, we're causing our own pain and suffering and our own disease and sickness. So, you know, it's a very it's a it's a very contrary thing to do. And this is why right at the beginning of the discussion, we talked about emotion a fair bit, didn't we? Yeah. And, and what the effect of us not feeling emotion has on our lives. God, God is trying to show us that the emotion is a very key, important part of our lives. The other, the other thing that God knows is that we have the ability to completely eradicate any disease-based pain and suffering. Mm. Now, you know, so God created a pretty amazing creation where that this creation can be impervious to disease and, and sickness. Mm. But only if the creation functions in the way it was designed. Yeah. Right? And, and so we need to understand that trying to use our soul in the way it wasn't designed to be used mm -hmm. by denying emotion mm -hmm. is basically a sin against oneself. Yeah. And this is why we have the individual pain and suffering that comes from disease, because it's showing them we're, we're sinning against ourselves. ourselves. We're, yeah. we're doing something wrong that's harming our own body, body. here, even yeah. to the point sometimes of death. Yes. Right? Now, obviously, if God, God knows that we have the pain, the ability to, to actually eradicate all forms of pain and suffering, not just sin, uh, sickness and disease, but mm. all forms of pain and suffering, including murder, war, rape, addictions, everything. Yep. Uh, if only we chose to live in harmony with God's laws of love, yeah. we would eradicate all of those things. Yeah. But it's also important to note when it comes to disease and sickness, that if the disease and sickness has been caused by somebody else's mm desire to sin, yeah. then God can actually assist us greatly to actually eradicate the disease and sickness, mm. right? He can assist us far more than when the disease and sickness has been caused by our own desire. Because to... really the cause is within us mm -hmm. when it's our own desire. That's right. The cause is, with, is the responsibility of someone else. Not fully. Uh, uh, frequently, like, and this is the case with children yes. uh, in particular. Yeah. Children often have a emotional condition through their, not through their own choice, but through the choices of the parents to retain their own emotional condition. Yes. Children absorb an emotional condition from their parents. Without so, a proper understanding of their Without a proper understanding will. of their will. Yeah. 
Whereas the parents have an understanding of the will that they can remove this mm -hmm. uh, this condition, but they chose not to. Yeah. Whereas the child doesn't understand that. Now, in the case of healing a child, it's, it, it, from a, from God's perspective, it's very as long as that child has some faith in mm -hmm. God's process, mm -hmm. and, and and the person who's involved in healing the child understands the laws involved, the child can be easily healed mm -hmm. of of the condition. Yeah. Uh, without the parents' participation, right, <laughs> yeah. can be easily healed of the condition, but uh, but when the parents are involved and the child has now a connection with the parents and now mm -hmm. wants to do what the parents want mm -hmm. and so forth, now that's a different matter altogether. Yeah. So so parents do not understand that even uh, disease and sickness in their own children frequently are caused by emotions in the parents that the parents refuse to face, mm -hmm. and 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 because of their refusal to face it the child gets sick and it might eventually even pass as mm. a result of the sickness. And yet the parents are not understanding that if the parents had faced their own personal emotional condition, they could have cured their own child. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's unfortunate, but it is possible for God to cure a child and for other people to cure the children in particular mm -hmm. who, uh, in, who are in this state. Yes, so that is, sorry. Because of the laws involved, mm -hmm. if you are the personal suppressor of your own emotion and you are the, you have decided you want to suppress your own emotion, obviously that's very different than the child suppressing its own emotion because it, because it desires to please you. Yeah. yeah. And this is, why, this is what is the primary cause of disease in the child. The child is attempting to suppress its own emotion to please its parent. Mm. The parent needs to get rid of itself, out of itself, the desire for the child to please it. Yeah. And then if the child no longer attempts to please the parent, now we've got a chance to heal the child from yeah. their problem. Yeah. Make sense? It does. But as soon as the child desires to please the parent, the child will, in fact, fight the process, fight the process yeah. and therefore cause its own disease, mm. right? In, to, in order to gain the parent's approval to suppress the emotion. Yes, sorry, you, you, the, the, the establishment of the illness is created through the, the child, the, the parent desiring for the child to please them and the well, child... Well, let's put it more succinctly. The establishment of the disease is caused by the parent's demand yes. that the child suppress its, its emotion because mm -hmm. it's not just a desire. It's yeah. a demand. If it was just a desire, the child probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. But it's a demand. The parent obviously demands the child suppress that particular emotion. Yeah. And and the child automatically, through the feeling process from the parent, knows that it must suppress that emotion. Mm -hmm. So it, so it takes the action to suppress the emotion. Yeah. And and unless the parents relieve the child of the burden to suppress the emotion, the child will continue doing so, even if someone comes along to try to cure the child. That's right. So the, the child themselves with their underdeveloped understanding of their free of the will, will. Uh, will continue to use their will, even if someone is attempting to heal them with God's process. Yes. The child will or will really oppose that process because of the relationship that's been established with the parent. Exactly. So it, it does take some change on the part of the parent or some breakdown of that relationship with the parent. Yes. Or separation. Separation somehow. in the relationship with the parent, yes. In order for that process to, to be begin. engaged successfully. That's right. Yeah. Because it, because all the, if, if the child is with the parent and all the child feels is the parent's strong demand, the addiction in the parent, to for the child to suppress the emotions the parents can't agree with yeah. or can't can't tolerate. Then, then the child's going to try to do that yeah. in order to gain the approval and love of the parent. Yeah. So, so frequently, the child, in an attempt to gain the approval and love of the parent, causes a disease inside of the child itself, which causes the own child's death, which mm. no longer gains mm -hmm. the approval or love of the parent. Obviously, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so, so, so it's a it's a very sad thing that happens with sad. childhood based sicknesses yes. and diseases. So that's really when you said uh, when the illness is caused by another person. Are you speaking really there? We're talking at childhood illnesses. Perhaps it's illnesses. the only circumstance where illnesses are caused by the people. What about um, kind of illnesses that arise from environmental contamination or something like that? They would that? not have a response in the person unless the person had a certain condition. Mm -hmm. And the, there's attractions operating there That's as right. well. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so under those circumstances, it's the person who wants to has to need to have faith in yeah. order to be cured by God. Needs yes. to have desire to address the underlying cause emotionally. Mm -hmm. In the case of a situation with a child, it's the parents that need to address their particular problem of demanding that the child suppress certain types of emotions. Yeah. 
and and if if the child no longer feels those demands and we can help the child to release itself from the demands of the parent mm -hmm. then a lot of childhood onset diseases will be eradicated yeah but but it's very rare for this to happen of course because if the parents have such a strong demand that the child suppresses its own emotion, then the parent's demand is very strong mm. and, and often driven by a lot of anger and rage. Yeah, mm. yeah, which is mm. very confronting for a child to... To confront, to yeah. To confront, yeah. yeah. And to have to experience, yeah. 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 yeah, the child will have to disagree with the parents even at a very young age in order yeah. to cure its own, to cure its own condition. Condition, And yeah. so it's going to need some help, probably external help to do so. Yeah, mm. yeah. Why God does not cure human disease and sickness. So we've talked about God's feelings about disease and sickness. Mm -hmm. uh, now we want to ask why doesn't God remove or cure disease and illness and sickness from humanity? Firstly, we've got to see that God didn't create the sickness or mm -hmm. disease, the humans did. Mm -hmm. God, in fact, created a soul and the, and the spirit and physical body that can be completely impervious to disease and sickness. Mm. So, so, but, but it has to be operated in a way that's in harmony with God's loving laws yes. in order to do so. If God removed the sickness and disease without there being an understanding on the part of the human that they are the cause of their sickness and disease by the suppression of emotion, mm -hmm. then that would be working against his own laws. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, God's not going to do that either. He can't do that because yeah. then we don't learn anything yeah. from the process. Is it, is it fair to say disease mm -hmm. and sickness is really an effect of sin? As we've talked about, of course, other it's things. an effect of sin, yes. but it's an effect of sin against oneself. Mm -hmm. So it's an effect of, of sinning by denying the operation of the way the soul has been created to function. Mm -hmm. right? So, so it's primarily a sickness towards it's a disease created by your own feelings about yourself, about what you want, you know, to have happen. So it is the cause of sin, but it's the sins you have that you're trying to do in order to satisfy, obviously, certain addictions yeah. that you probably have. The effects of sin, you mean? Yeah. yeah. The, the, remember, the addictions are the desire yes. and the effects are the sin themselves. Yeah. And so, so the addictions, obviously, there's an addiction to do something that suppresses an emotion mm -hmm. in order to do something like gain the approval of others or to mm -hmm. gain the acceptance of others or to... There's some driving force that you're yep. not recognising, which yep. is sinful yep. in, its, in, its, in its underlying desire, mm -hmm. and it's causing the sin. But, but, but you do this thing, and of course you're, sin you're also sinning against the way the soul functions. So, mm -hmm. so when you sin against the way the soul functions, there is always something that happens to you personally. Yeah. Uh, when you sin against other people's soul, there's often other things that happen. But mm -hmm. when, it, when, it, when you sin, in a, sin against the way your own soul functions, there's diseases that are created as a result. Once we understand that is the truth, now God can assist us. <laughs> yeah. But we need to understand that that is the truth, and most people don't, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, you know, when most people ask God to, you know, heal them of a disease uh, or, or sickness, there is little or no understanding of what created it in the first place. Mm. Now, we need to understand what creates things in order to eradicate them. Otherwise, they're just going to pop up again. Yeah. We, we'll do it over and over again, and particularly if it's driven by an addiction. Yeah. We, we, you know, we'll, we'll eradicate it one time and then it's going to happen again. And this is why like, a lot of people with things like cancer frequently have a remission yeah. where they work through some issue, but because the underlying emotion is not eradicated, it pops up again yeah. and it pops up again and eventually kills them, you know, because the underlying thing isn't eradicated. The yeah. desire to suppress emotion is not eradicated. Mm -hmm. uh, and so because of the lack of understanding, sooner or later, it causes the disease that ends their life even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So God can only help a person with a disease or sickness if the person themselves has a sincere longing uh, and desire to heal the problem at its causal level, yes. which is the actual suppression of underlying emotions. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the reason why the sickness or disease exists yep. must be addressed. Yes. So unless that is the case, then... How can God cure it? He, if the law is creating it. God would be acting against his own law if he cured it. Yeah. He, he needs yeah. to allow the law to create it so that you can reflect upon the fact that you are suppressing something. Mm -hmm. And then when you desire to stop suppressing that particular thing, now God can assist you through other means. Yeah. But, but un, unless you desire to do that, which mm. most people, of course, don't, um, there's little God can do about the mm. situation because we are causing it. Yes. And we're using our will to cause it. Yeah. Mm. 
And diseases are rising from an unloving condition within the soul always, yes. which is basically the refusal to forgive or repent. One exactly, it's one of the two, yeah, yeah ironically. That's, yeah. that's what creates an unloving condition within us. That's right. And so um, God's going to have the same attitude really towards us about if our refusal to forgive and repent, which we'll talk about in the subsequent part of this session. Yeah. Um, as uh, as he does about our illness, really. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, so, you know, the refusal to forgive and repent is the thing that's causing our illness in the first place. So how can he then not just allow the law of compensation to do its work? Yes. You know, the law is, is has been created for those who don't want to re repent or forgive. Yeah. So so yeah. it has to be allowed to operate. And, and this is the problem is that since, you know, the disease is a result from these unloving conditions in the soul, whether we realize them or not. Mm -hmm. But even a, at a lot of like the physical disease or sickness is 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 the desire is sort of the desire of the soul to demonstrate to itself that something is wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and we need to recognize it as such, you know. Yeah. So, so if we can see it like that and go, okay, here I am, I'm, I'm creating the disease. Obviously, I'm doing something wrong in the functioning of my own soul. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah. You know, what, what is the thing I'm doing? Let, me, let me use this, these symptoms or this illness to help me discover where I'm out of harmony with God's laws. That's, right. That's yeah. right, yeah. And I've had a lot of sicknesses and yeah. diseases yeah. in my life. Uh, you know, most of which now have been cured, not all, you know, mm -hmm. but most. And, and, you know, I've had to work my way through lots of emotions as a result, mm. and, and particularly the, the desire to suppress those emotions. Mm. Mm. It has been the driving factor. To, uh, in the creation of their physical symptoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've had to work through my desire to continue to suppress, you mm -hmm. know. I, I've had to allow myself to experience the emotion instead. Yeah. And quite frequently, uh, like I've got things like a cold or a flu or something like that, and within a, f a day I've cured it by actually feeling the emotion that I was denying. Yeah. And uh, and so after a while, you get used to that particular process. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, it, it, once it gets to the stage where your body is exhibiting the symptoms, it's a it's a demonstration of the extent of the denial. Yeah. Yeah. And once you understand that, you can cure your own sickness and cure disease anyway. Sickness. Well, and, and I suppose that if we're going back to um, why God doesn't cure disease and end suffering um, and God's feelings about all of this, is God is compassionate, is he not, for, for the situation that we're in? Certainly. And God wants to. But he didn't create it. He didn't create it. He wants to assist us to to remove it but he can't, but he can't if we don't recognize we, its cause unless yes unless we are willing participants in that whole process that's right yeah that's right so god god would like to end disease and suffering but can't do it without us well when you say can't do it without us we caused it if he did it without us he would actually be negating the principle of self-responsibility yeah so so he's not going to do it it's not that he yeah. can't because he's all powerful, he could choose to do anything he wanted. Yes, but without but breaking not the going laws to. of his very universe. Yeah, he's not yeah. going to because to do it would actually negate the self responsibility of the human. Yes, and he can't do that. He's not going to do that. He's yeah. decided he's not going to do that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and there's he's good reasons firm. Yeah. because you you yeah. need to make the person who's the free thinking being self responsible for its actions and choices. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Okay, so. Um, Painful conditions caused by others can be cured by God, but only under specific circumstances that are in harmony with God's other laws, including the laws pertaining to forgiveness of others. That's right. So, you know, the painful conditions caused by others, it's okay. Yeah, they can be, they can definitely be cured. Yeah. But again, we have to understand that we must, you know, so for example, somebody did something to us, let's say, in the case of a child, something, mm -hmm. the parents have done something, the child now is attempting to suppress its emotions because of what the parent is mm -hmm. doing. That's what's causing the disease in the child. Yes. The, the parent is suppressing his emotions and the child feels, the, the parent wants to suppress his emotion and wants to suppress the child's emotion. Mm. And the child feels that it must suppress its own emotion. That's what's causing the disease. The disease. 
if the parent could alleviate this problem of projecting at the child to stop preventing emotion, yes. and the child could also be cured of the problem of trying to gain their parent's approval by suppressing emotion, mm -hmm. then the child wouldn't experience any disease. Yeah. Right. So, so you know, that's how you'd easily cure every child mm -hmm. of any disease mm -hmm. if you could address those two problems. Yeah. But that obviously is not what's happening here. For it to be this intense that the child wishes to suppress its own condition, mm -hmm. It has to be an intense projection from the parent. Yeah. 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 Okay. And usually it's one or both parents. Yes. You know, so it's, it's, it can be if quite If it's a intense. serious illness, it's usually... Um, usually both. If it's a, a very serious illness yeah. that's life-threatening, usually both. If it's something like, you know, colds, flus, those kind of things, yeah. it's usually one or both parents or one parent trying to shut down something that it feels at one point in time yeah. or whatever, something quite minor in reality mm -hmm. that the parent just needs to cry about and yeah. wants it, nobody around it to experience sadness. And so the child knows, I can't kind of experience sadness. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to experience sadness. I have to shut down the sad feelings that I might have. Yeah. And straight away, it's going to get some kind of cold flu you know yeah. as a result yeah and and this is why children at uh, you know at, at birth get sicknesses like colds or flus and stuff yeah. because it, it, they are intensely feeling the projections of the parents and they have no verbal uh, or uh, cognitive ability to, it, yeah. to defend against it yeah and so they automatically just get sick because they're trying to yeah. do what the parent desires yeah it's mm. pretty intense hey? mm. Mm. How God feels about harmful human creations. How does God feel about harmful human creations? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, God didn't create them. So yeah. God feels like, well, humans created them. Uh, it's basically the same as the other principles we've been stating about yeah. sickness and disease and about addictions and sin itself. Yeah. You know, God didn't create them. Humans create them. So who's going to have to get rid of them? Well, of course, humans are going to have to get rid of them. Yeah. And, and you know, if we just refer to the prior section about why God doesn't... Remove sickness. Uh, well, why, what God feels about human yeah. sickness and disease, you can see that the same principles really apply. Yeah. So it must be re remembered that God's laws have been designed over time to completely eradicate every human creation that's out of harmony with love. Yeah. Right. And we discussed that underlying principle in the 2016 assistance groups in the in this in the last uh, assistance groups where mm -hmm. we talked about understanding God's loving laws. Yeah, and particularly the principles of permanence and governance. So yeah. what I would suggest people do is look at that material. Yeah. And if you haven't seen that material, it's essential material to understand yeah. as to why God will not do these things. Yes, because it, because it, to do so, he'd be working against his own principles and laws and he yes. can't do that. These principles and laws have been established for loving reasons. Exactly. And the loving reason in particular is that a person must understand their creations as to why they created them. And to, <laughs> to come to be a self-responsible being. being. Yeah. yeah. To be to a self-responsible being. You must be will. made responsible yes. for what you choose to do. <laughs> yeah. And there's a principle of self-responsibility involved mm -hmm. in that as well. Mm -hmm. So so you can see there's very good reasons why, from a loving perspective, God cannot do these things unless humans are involved in the process. Yeah. 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 And most humans don't want to be involved in the process. In fact, they want to continue the process that they're mm -hmm. already doing, which is creating more unloving creations. They don't want to engage a process of loving creation. Yeah. And and so God can't assist them under those circumstances. He's got to wait until they want to know about loving creation. Mm. And then of course there, there will pl be plenty of assistance available to to them to, you know, to do these particular things. So God's feelings, though, are exactly the same as God's feelings about everything else unloving that we create. Yeah. <laughs> right. He doesn't like that we do it. Yeah. He allows us to do it because we need to see the... Uh, to learn the lessons. To learn the lessons of responsibility. Yeah. We create things. We're going to have to bear the consequences of what we create. Why God will not remove harmful human creations. So following on, why doesn't God remove the creations that we make that are harmful to ourselves, to the environment, to other people? Yes. Yeah, so here again, we could just say, well, it's the same answer as to why God doesn't remove sickness uh, and disease. You know, it's the same answer as to why God doesn't remove sin, you know, yeah. because they are human creations. And if he removed them, he'd be acting against his own laws, yes. which actually have a cause and effect relationship with our creations. Yeah. So. You know, obviously, we can't expect God to remove things that we create. 
we've got to be involved in the process of removal. Mm. Now, God can help us remove them, mm -hmm. but it can only help us remove them if we ourselves have a sincere desire to remove them yeah. and we even understand what, why we created them in the first place. What, why did we create them? Why did we do such harmful things in the first place? It needs to also be addressed. So we need to see the cause of those creations. We need to understand the reasons why we do what we do before God can assist in the removal of them. Yeah, most of humanity at the moment wants to create unloving things, so have harmful human creations um, and complain about the effects of those creations, want someone yes. else to deal with the effects, yes. but to continue harm, creating harmfully yeah. for really. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And, and the reality is if God removed the effects, then we'd probably create more of them. Yeah. You know, unless yeah. we understand that we're creating them yeah. and we're create we're the cause of the war. We're mm. the cause of we're in the cause of sickness and uh, yeah. and disease. Yeah. We're we're the cause of these other uh, these underlying problems. We need to solve them. Mm. We're 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 intelligent beings. God gave us a brain yeah. and and to use, not to just squander. Yeah. You know, we're intelligent beings. We can find out the cause of these particular problems if we're intelligent. And clever enough and we and connect we with God to. and God wants yeah. to tell us what the cause is anyway yes. it's not like we're dumb and blind where you know somebody <laughs> somebody can't show us or or or, or tell us yeah. what what the problem is yeah. we, we you know we can listen and and understand oh that's the problem and do something about it yeah. it's just we don't yes and that's the problem yeah we, we choose collectively not to yeah so while some individuals might cure their own diseases, it's unlikely that people generally on the planet will cure all disease until and creations yeah. and creations yeah. and, and, you know, any harmful creations yeah. while we're all avoiding the reason why we do it and what we do and how yeah. we do it and, and taking responsibility for it. <laughs> and, and wanting to say, oh, I had no choice. I have to do things this way. That's the way it's always been done. Yeah. Or, and that's the way my mum and dad did it. Minimising the harm and saying that yeah. the, the effects come from some other cause. Or blaming and, God and saying, yeah, God created a terrible system. Yeah. What a stupid God we have. You know, yeah. there mustn't be a God at all, you know, because, yeah. you know, otherwise this wouldn't all be happening, you know. Yeah. All these things are just excuses to deny self-responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So all, har all harmful creations result from unloving conditions within our soul. Mm -hmm. We need to remove the unloving conditions within our soul if we're going to remove the harmful yeah. creations. God's not going to remove the harmful conditions within our soul without our involvement yeah. and without our desire being yeah. expressed to do it. And we can't expect God to do anything else. Mm -hmm. right? And no not reasonable person could expect God to do anything else. Surely yeah. you have to be pretty unreasonable to blame somebody else for what you created. What you create. Right. Yeah. And, and the reality is, as a human race, we're pretty unreasonable. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We're like spoiled kids. <laughs> yeah, we go off and create all these things because we want to do, and then yeah. and then we come. You know, all the all the effects of it come home to roost. The mm. effects of sin are pain and suffering. Yeah, the pain and suffering comes home to roost, and then we go, "Why did God do this to me? Yes. You know, like why yeah. why was this done to me? Yeah. Well, look at what the universe is doing to me. What what a crappy universe we live in. How yeah. dangerous is the universe? No." Yeah. You're the one that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. You're the one that created it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. need to see the danger of living out of harmony with love in our yeah. personal lives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also collectively. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> How God feels about human ethical or moral frailty and weakness. <laughs> so this is a good topic. Yeah. <laughs> How does God feel uh, about our behaviour that's unethical or immoral? Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about how we titled this about frailty and weakness. Yes. Man, there's, so, there's this common concept, isn't it, on the planet? Oh, you know, humans have been created this frail, weak thing and yeah. we're all insipid and at the end of the day, we're all going to do... Going to sin you know, and we're inherently we're bad. We're all a bit and, narcissistic yeah. in the end and we all yeah. just do what we want. And we just have to accept we're, it. we got no ethics yeah. or morality, you know. Yeah. We just have to accept that we're just all animals and, yeah. and we haven't yeah. got any higher nature, you know, yeah. and all this stuff. And it's all like... <laughs> <laughs> not true <laughs> yeah yeah you, you could use a lot stronger terms yeah. couldn't you but but god didn't create us to be frail and weak and he mm -hmm. didn't create us to be unethical and immoral yeah he created us with moral compass a, a, a design that we can become moral 
he created us with eth ethics in a sense of knowing and feeling when things are unfair. Mm -hmm. People do feel when things are unfair. Mm -hmm. He also created us to be strong and to stand up for truth. You know, yeah. that's how, what he created us to be. He yeah. created us to have some strength of character. He's given us the opportunity to develop strength of character and assistance to overcome any lack of strength of character, yeah. any unethical or immoral choices yeah. that we make. And that, that that we talked about that a lot in terms of the way that the whole universe is constructed in the start of this session about yeah. how much God loves us as individuals and collectively. Yeah. And all of those things that God's provided us are the opportunities and assistance to overcome anything that's unethical or moral within us, any motivation. Exactly, within us. Yeah. yeah. And the fact and the fact that there is pain and suffering that results from unethical and immoral behaviour, that's quite clear. Yes. Like it is quite yeah, clear. Yeah. It's like you, you cheat on your wife, you're going to get some pretty negative effects, right? Yes. You, you are. Yeah. And, and you know that. Everybody yeah. who cheats on their wife, even to this day, you cheat on your wife, you pretty much know you're going to get some pretty, <laughs> you know, negative effects, right? <laughs> like, and if you it's don't, not like everybody's blind to it. Yeah, that's right. You just, you might think you're going to avoid those effects, yeah. but it's, it's not the You truth. know if you yeah. overeat, you're going to get fat, right? Yeah. You do. Yeah. You yeah. do know that. If yeah. You know that if you... You know, if you if you constantly uh, have a lack of exercise, lack of self care, you're going to get sick a, yeah. a lot more frequently. You know that. Yeah. So, so these are all consequences of our unethical and moral behaviour. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not like we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like it's quite plain. Yeah. Like the way the laws work is quite plain. It mm -hmm. demonstrates to us that we do have the results that we get when we engage certain behaviour. Mm -hmm. We know that. Mm -hmm. So, so why is it then that we expect, you know, God to not have some feelings about? you know yeah. our behavior and also why is it that we expect god to cure our behavior when when the reality is we're engaging it yeah willingly yeah through desire to to meet addiction mm -hmm. to so we want the sin of it right yeah. so god's constantly trying to share the truth to us through the conscience about our unethic our lack of ethics and our uh, 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 lack of morals <laughs> god's constantly trying to do everything personally by guiding other people around us who are listening to God to show us that we're being unethical and immoral. Mm -hmm. And God also demonstrates through the law that, and also through his own actions that he doesn't agree with us being unethical or immoral. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That it's going to cause major disasters in and, your life. And he does that in a lot of ways. Like when we connect to the conscience, we can find that out. When we have a personal relationship with love-based relationship, we can find that out. But even just in the way that unloving, immoral, unethical behaviour is penalised through pain and suffering, through compensation, yeah. and rewarded. The, the opposite is rewarded. The moral and ethical actions we take are rewarded. Exactly. There's an it's immediate reward upon ourselves. It's not, it's not like it's bl we blind to it. Like yeah. everybody knows that, you know, <laughs> if you act in a kind manner to somebody, you're probably going to be, you know, get some kindness in return. Yeah. Everybody sort of knows that yeah. if, you're, if you're ethical in the way you deal with money, the, the, uh, and moral in the way you deal with money the, and don't cheat people out of their money, that people have respect for you and yes. you'll probably receive money. But when, when you take people's money and you cheat, on, you yeah. cheat people's money out of them, then sooner or later you probably end up in jail. Everybody knows that. Exactly. <laughs> and you feel worse and worse or better and better according to what you do. Exactly. And so God's pretty much doing everything possible apart from making us robots that he controls exactly. to assist us with um, this a human ethical or moral frailty and weakness and to say yeah. you're not frail and weak no. you have total capacity to you make want to act choices. frail and weak yes sure you know yeah. and you do it's that for a whole leap of denial things, mostly, of responsibility is, yeah, yeah mostly denial of responsibility mm -hmm. but and that's not how god created us to be and we have the capacity to be different mm -hmm. and god expects us in fact to be different yeah. Um, and the fact that we're not is our own fault yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the fault of our previous generations influencing yeah. us. But at the end of the day, once you're an adult, it is your choice and decision. You're, mm. You can make different choices and decisions. So make them. You mm. know, st stop blaming other people for your choice and decisions and get on with your life and make your own choice and decisions that are in harmony with love and the harmony respect of other people and respect yeah. the law. You yes. Know? And do that, and you'll probably end up to be a happier person and a more satisfied person in your personal life. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. So, so get on with it and do it. You know, yes. don't and and deal with any reason why you feel like you can't. Yes. So whether that's fear or whether that's anger or whatever mm. it is, uh, deal with that so that you can. Yes. And 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 then you will. Yeah. So God. Sorry, go ahead. Go on. Oh, just in terms of how God feels about this stuff, 
God doesn't respect or agree with a person who demonstrates a desire to ignore ethics and morality and live in fear. No. Yeah. Um, and God sees that a lack of ethics and morality has a major destructive impact upon other people. Upon society, other, yeah. Other creations, other creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible impact upon yeah. all sorts of areas of society and, and the world itself. Yeah. The, and also the environment. Yeah. You know, the lack of ethics there is pretty, pretty extreme. Mm. So, you know, naturally, how can we expect God to cure any of these things when we ourselves are engaging the action you know yeah. we've got to start start looking at ourselves and going yeah we need to we need to stop the actions ourselves yeah yeah yeah, yeah, for yeah. Sure. <laughs> questions about how god feels so we've talked a lot in this session about how god feels about a variety of things but Obviously, we could talk all night. <laughs> well, you know, about... there's an infinite number of questions we could ask about how God feels about different subjects, yes. right? We... So, so that, that seems to be now pointless to continue that yeah. because, because what we're basically encouraging people to do is, right, you have a personal connection. You, you, you <laughs> people who are listening to us have a personal connection with God. You've got the ability to understand how God feels about any subject just by connecting to God through your conscience. Yes. God's going to share the truth about how God feels with you on the subjects that God, you know, that you want to know about, sincerely want to know about and want to feel about inside of yourself. So, you know, all these kind of questions like how does God feel about, you know, the evil human hu emotions. power of your emotions? Is God going to get rid of your evil and human emotions? How does God feel about humans well, we... harming other humans? Is God going to get rid of humans who harm other humans? <laughs> if, is going to is God? How does God feel about the choice to be ignorant? How is God going to get rid of the people who are ignorant? You know, yeah. like yeah. is is how does God? Why doesn't God enforce love and truth on yeah. people? And why doesn't God make us all informed? And why isn't why isn't God forcing us to be ethical and moral? And how does God feel when God when we're not we're, when we are, we are are ethical and, and moral and we are happy yeah. how do all of these questions are all answered by god mm. through your conscience you're able to get the answers to these questions by god through the conscience so why aren't you yeah so so you can see obviously if if god's got a mechanism that god created that's available to you in your soul and will you ask these questions and you don't know the answers mm. then you've got to start questioning why it is that you're not hearing God because he's sharing this truth with you. Why aren't you hearing it? You've got the ability to ask any of these questions. Why aren't you hearing the answers? Yeah. Yeah. And we've really got to get down to the stage where we go, wow, how much do I really want to know the real answer yeah. to these particular problems? And, and what I love about our discussion today is, as you mentioned earlier, it's lovely to talk intellectually a bit about how God feels about a variety of issues because it can open us up to to um, to new ideas and sometimes new emotions mm. uh, or, or to feel more of ourselves emotionally but in the end as you say God's got all these mechanisms and all this desire and all these mechanisms acting to enforce to encourage our desire to have a connection with God mm. personally and mm. that conscience mechanism and the the you know connection by the Holy Spirit and even the observance of the law of compensation working in our life mm. and the option to engage forgiveness and repentance all of that is there so that we can actually become more aware personally of the answers to all of the questions that you were just asking. Yeah, but, it, you know, the primary mechanisms that we have with God directly are the most effective. Yes. And yet we deny them. Yes. And, and so... So that's the conscience, forgiveness and repentance. Well, no, it's the con primarily Spirit. the conscience and the desire for God's love. Yes. Those two mechanisms, the longing, uh, connecting with through the Holy Spirit and the mechanism of the conscience, receiving truth through the conscience. They're the two primary uh, direct methods that so God has. The longing for love and the longing for truth, basically, yeah. from has, God directly. From God directly. Yeah. They're the two primary direct methods that God has to share truth with us. Why are we not engaging them? Yeah. You know, that, you know it, it, it's really important to address why. Yeah. And whether it's because we're not believing God or whether it's because we've got other issues, you know, that we are refusing to face or whether it is just that we don't want to know the truth. Yeah. We need to come face to face with it because yeah. for our own sake, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, just as much as for anybody else's. Yeah. Because, uh, because otherwise we're going to continue causing our own pain and suffering mm -hmm. and God can't stop us from doing yeah. it because it's our will being engaged. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, if you engage your will in an unloving direction, there's always going to be an unloving consequence. Mm. So it's time we sort of stop for a while and go, okay, God has the ability to share the answer of any question with me. Mm. If I'm not receiving the answers to the questions about how God feels about these matters, then I don't want the answer. Mm. Why don't I want the answer? Yeah. What, what is the answer going to do to me? Yeah. What, what do I think it's going to, how do I think it's going to affect my life in mm. a negative way? Because I obviously believe it will. Yeah. Why is it that I don't want to hear it? Why is it that I don't, because hearing it often means that you then have to take some action. Mm. Why don't I want to take any personal action? Mm. Why don't I want to take steps to eradicate from within me desires to sin? Mm. These are all questions that we need to sort of ask ourselves if we're going to be repentant and, mm -hmm. and also desire to forgive others for what they have done. We need to address these particular questions. And so, uh, what, you know, obviously we, we're two-thirds two of the way through this conversation mm. now. And, and probably what we'd like to, you know, when we leave this section and move on to how God feels about forgiveness and repentance mm. directly, what we'd like to probably do on this end of this section is go, right, we've seen now how God feels, like this section has been about sin primarily, mm. right? We've seen now how God feels about sin, but how do you feel about sin? Yeah. Um, you know, because if you feel that sin is okay when God feels quite a, a strong dislike for sin, mm then obviously you're not going to be feeling God's uh, feelings about anything that, uh, about your sins. Mm. And, and so that's going to prevent you from growth mm. and having a personal relationship with God. It's also going to prevent you from ever engaging repentance and forgiveness. Yeah. So obviously the real question of this whole section is not what, does God, what are God's emotions about sin. Mm. What are your emotions about sin? Yeah. What, what, what is it that you do? with your sin? Mm. What, what are you wanting to do with your sin? Mm. Do you want to get rid of it or do you want to keep engaging it? Do you still want the addictions met or do you, are you going to fix these desires that are out of harmony with love? That's the real question. Yeah. And because God, 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 God can make it quite clear to you what his feelings are mm. about sin. But the problem is you can't change God's opinions about sin. You can only change your own. Yeah. And you can't fix anything that God's done, because all God's done is all good. It's not sinful. Yeah. You can only fix what your sinful creations are. Mm. So you'd be far better off focusing the question back on oneself and going, what do I, what are my emotions about sin? Yeah. Why do I want to keep engaging it? When am I going to see the pain and suffering that results mm. from my sin? Mm. When am I going to cure myself of my sin, mm -hmm. my desire to sin? Mm. When am I going to take actions on these particular issues? That's the real question I feel. Mm. Mm.